Arsenal in all its glory. Can they make the top four? Welcome to One to One with Simon Jordan. Next week is the penultimate show of the year, so don't forget to leave your questions in the comment section below. Equal is important to like and subscribe, but let's get on with this week's show. Sky Sports Pundits, there's a few of them that great on me. I mean, I don't like listening to Mika Richards guffaw like a donkey all afternoon. And I'm not hugely interested in listening to Jamie Redknapp put me to sleep for 90 minutes where I come out of that without actually learning anything because I don't think he says anything other than platitudes. I have to say that in equal measure, Neville enthuses me, Gary Neville enthuses me and annoys me because he enthuses me when he talks about the game and talks about the live action because it's seeing it through such an insightful set of eyes and I get to watch and listen to someone that's really speaking from real experience and giving me an insight into the game or what's going on. And then I find myself in an enraged state when I listen to some of the self-serving drivel that he comes out with when he talks about things that he clearly doesn't understand. He's got a massive soapbox, and I understand he's been put on it, and I understand he's Sky's poster boy. But there is a point where you get to the scenario where you say, hang, hang on a second, you know, someone sent you a memo somewhere along the line that your opinion is unassailable, where it isn't, because a lot of what you say or what Gary says doesn't stand up. It doesn't stand up about independent regulation. It didn't stand up about the European Super League. It doesn't stand up about a lot of aspects. And whilst I think it's interesting, what I do think would be interesting if someone like Gary Neville had the balls to come and sit on a show with me or me and Danny Kelly or me and Jim White and actually have someone that really questions the observations that he makes. Because when you're talking about independent regulation and the club that you own probably doesn't comply with the regulation it's currently under, when you're, you've got vested interest in it because you want to be part of it, yet you're espousing the world of your views on it, I find it a little bit hypocritical. And I also, I don't think what he says has any real substance behind it, so I find that irritating. But obviously on the flip side of it, when I'm listening to him talk about something he really does know about, which is the action on the pitch, it's very interesting. But compared to Sunes and Keane, that give you this overview, where in Sunes Talks, he's one of the few pundits that I want to listen to and stop and engage with, or more to the point, just listen to. And when Keane speaks, you're going to get something that might resemble media gold. You might not always agree with it, but you're going to come away thinking, that was interesting, that was something I didn't think of. And I think Keane's got the courage of his convictions, albeit sometimes disappearing into a sort of pantomime villain role. Arsenal in all its glory. Can they make the top four? I don't think so. Um, if you look at their performance last night, I would say definitely not. I think that Arteta is building the base and I think it's going to be similar to the situation that, that occurred at Chelsea, which is someone gets to assemble all the parts or bring all the parts and someone else, the grown-up, comes in and puts them all together like Tuchel was done at Chelsea. So I don't think Arsenal have the capability of getting in the top four. I don't know who that top four is going to be made up of because I think it will ultimately be the usual three and a another maybe West Ham or maybe Manchester United. But the bottom line is, is I don't think it will be Arsenal. I think Arsenal are still struggling to find an identity. They're still struggling to find a reality of what a decent, successful, character-based Arsenal should look like again because it's been a long time missing. So I don't think they'll finish inside the top four. I don't think Arteta will be in the longer term the manager of Arsenal. But I do think within the next five years, you'll see Arsenal back to a level that they were 10 or 12 years ago. Um, Newcastle United, this conundrum that seems to haunt me as if I'm massively fixated with Newcastle and they're living rent free in my head. The questions are asked, I answer them. Newcastle is a club that I have a great deal of affection for because as is well known, I spent next door, living next door to John Hall and Dougie Hall for many years and Freddie Shepherd and all, all, all of the management team of Newcastle I got on very well with even when Bobby Robson was there. I don't like the takeover. I'm not a fan of Stavely's. I think she's a Pied Piper. And I think if this deal had been done quicker and better, then Newcastle would have had a change at the beginning of the season. So I, do I want them to go down? I think they're probably their fans are the most deserving of a bit of success, but their owners are the least deserving. So there's a part of me that thinks that they should go down because I think you reap what you sow. 
There's another part of me that sits with the fans, so I can't give you a plain English answer besides, yes, I probably want them to go down. I mean, Liverpool are in great nick, um, and the idea that they need to be backed in January is a difficult one because nobody does good business in January. So if you're backing Klopp in January, the argument could be said that you should have backed him in August when the market's more sensible. Of course, Liverpool are impacted by the African Cup of Nations. And there's an argument to be said, how possibly, that if Mohamed Salah wants this huge contract, then maybe he shouldn't be going to play in the African Cup of Nations and should be held back by Liverpool, um, whether it be for quarantine restrictions or whether it be because he's getting a big contract and should stay and play for the Football Cup with playing his wages. But I'm, um, I'm not sure Klopp has given such a return on investment. If you look at the top five or six managers in the Premier League, he has spent the least amount of money per point. Um, I think it's something like 400 grand per point achieved during his time, whereas people like Solskjaer and Guardiola have spent a lot more per point. So you know you're going to spend money with him sensibly, or as sensibly as a January market will allow you. The question is, what do Liverpool need? And if they need something, and Klopp wants something, and he's calling for it, it's going to be difficult to suggest that he shouldn't be heard, because whilst he can spend money, he spends it wisely on the return. So if Klopp wants to be backed in January, I would be inclined to back him, because he tends to give you a return on it. Um, you know, given the financial muscle that Manchester City have, it's difficult to see anything taking them off course of being an elite club. Now, of course, Guardiola being there now for six years is starting to produce a footprint which is unique to him. If he's doing his job properly, there'll be succession management, there'll be a culture inside the football club that the next appointment should be able to take advantage of. Now, Man City were winning things before Guardiola came along. They were winning the same things that he's winning and, and not winning, i.e. the Champions League. So an argument could be had that he has yet to do the job that he was actually brought in to do, which was win the Champions League. He was also brought in to bring a brand of football and it's undeniable that he's achieved that. So it depends where City go. They're always gonna go best in class. Once upon a time, there wasn't a Pep Guardiola and there were elite managers that were doing elite things. So once Pep Guardiola departs and if he goes to New York City, which is being rumored might be part of his thinking, then there'll be another elite manager that steps in, whether that's Ten Hag or Negelsmann or another elite manager that's out there, and to carry the baton. So I don't fear in any shape or form for Man City, and you might be surprised that someone raises the bar again. So that's this week's issue. Don't forget to leave me your views on Arsenal, Newcastle, and Sky Sports Pundits. Leave your questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.